Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. Today we're going to have another one of those episodes where I sound a bit like Grandpa Simpson, peering into the hazy distance of my youth and trying to unscramble the things I remember and the things I think I remember, wandering off down memory lane, taking a circuitous route to one of my favourite destinations, Advanced Hero Quest. So, sorry in advance if this isn't very interesting. There are more painting guides, playthroughs and reviews on the way. Promise. My first foray into Warhammer Fantasy Battle was the 4th edition box starter set from 1992, which was… glorious. It came with massed units of archers and spearmen for large goblin and high elf armies, cardboard buildings and even cardboard standees for war machines and monsters, so you could have a pretty exciting game without immediately shelling out on additional purchases. It was that box set that started me on the path to building huge green skin undead and dwarf armies. However, Long before I ever owned Warhammer Fantasy Battle, my Greenskin Horde had already been given a jumpstart thanks to a little box of awesomeness called Warhammer Fantasy Regiments, which originally came out in 1987, but which I must have picked up around 1990. This was a box containing 60 miniatures, 10 each of 6 different races, and I had bought it simply because I really liked those miniatures. Fantasy Regiments was actually the first box set of miniatures I ever purchased. The second was the Skeleton Army box, which formed the backbone, pun intended, of my glorious undead army, but more on that in a moment. Fantasy Regiments was a weird box. It was weird to have six units of six different races – dwarfs, wood elves, dark elves, skaven, goblins and orcs – but it was exciting too. One of the things I had loved about HeroQuest was the diversity of the enemies you could face, and here was a box of miniatures demonstrating a similar kind of variety. And Games Workshop really sold the promise of adventure with this box. Here's the blurb from the side panel. The Orc General snarled as armoured dwarves moved to block the pass, hefting their axes and hammers in expectation of the battle to come. There was a stirring at the edge of the wood, and elven archers emerged from the greenery to cover the dwarven flank. CHARGE! The orcs raced toward the dwarven line as the arrows flew. Some fell, but soon the two units were locked in combat across the mouth of the pass. The orcs' skaven allies scampered chittering towards the wood as the goblin archers and dark elf crossbows kept up a withering support fire. The elves fought with grim determination, knowing well that their ancestral enemies the Dark Elves waited to mop up the survivors of the Skaven attack. If only the dwarves could cut through the orcs first. Will the heroic dwarves and elves be able to turn the tide against the weight of numbers? Will the evil alliance crush them underfoot and move on to spread carnage elsewhere? Only you can say, for in this box you have all the troops you need to fight this battle and many others. If that, along with the awesome box art by Angus Fieldhouse, didn't make you want to throw a green blanket over some stacks of books and roll some dice, nothing did. The figures were beautifully sculpted, mysteriously attributed to Citadel designers rather than any one person. And as Citadel only started producing plastic miniatures in 1987, this box represents some of the earliest plastic options for the Fantasy Battle line. They even made a point on the back of the box to say, once they're painted, the only way you can tell that they're not metal is by picking them up. Now you can build rank and file of your Warhammer Fantasy Battle armies easily and economically. And beyond being an intriguing selection of fantasy creatures, they were also an excellent way to get more comfortable with building and converting miniatures, as they came with some limited customization options. Each miniature comprised a main body piece with a separate head. For example, the elves had a choice of being hooded or with their ponytails flowing, while the dwarves could choose between skull caps or horned helmets. Additionally, some of the miniatures could have different armaments. With a careful snip of the side cutters, you could remove the dwarf's axe head and replace it with a warhammer, or the orc scimitar could become a cleaver. There were also separate shields for the dwarves, orcs, goblins and skaven. The wood elves were the first miniatures I assembled from the set. I was fixated with the television series Robin of Sherwood around that time. Clannad's mystical soundtrack is still one of my favourite albums ever. So naturally, I gave nine of them hoods, and one had a ponytail because he was the boss. But it would be some time before I painted them, as I don't believe I ever touched a brush until after I became the proud owner of the Fantasy Battle box set. As it turned out, the Wood Elves did end up being one of the first, if not the first, things I ever painted. I did them with white bows with blue bands around each end, because I had seen elves painted that way by Mike McVeigh in an issue of White Dwarf, and I thought it looked amazing. Mine didn't look amazing. 
but I did snip the bow off one, glued on a cocktail stick and fashioned a banner out of paper. I bet I thought I was an absolute legend at the time, screw making Tracy Island out of toilet rolls. Anyway, those elves would eventually see action on the tabletop as an allied contingent to my hopeless dwarf army. An army I ordered wholesale from Games Workshop's mail order department after it had been featured in a battle report in White Dwarf. In my senior years, I always remember that army being the one that featured in the Battle for Grimdahl's Tomb in White Dwarf 153, one of the best battle reports White Dwarf ever published. But I recently looked back at that army, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't. My army had lots of spearmen and thunderers in it. But I'm well off track now, back to fantasy regiments. While the elves and dwarves eventually found their way into my dwarf army, the orcs and goblins were drafted much earlier, as they became valuable additions to the wow that the 4th edition box set started. The goblin archers were always my favourites, and I used the little 10 gobbo squad as a sort of scout force. Of course, Games Workshop love a bit of recycling and repackaging, so the miniatures from Fantasy Regiments were eventually repackaged and resold in the box set Fantasy Fighters. They were no longer regiments because you only got half the number of sprues in this new box. Barely enough for a rowdy gathering, never mind a regiment. But it is worth bearing in mind if you are ever looking for these miniatures on eBay, if you aren't having any luck searching for Fantasy Regiments, try searching for Fantasy Fighters instead. But also, which brings us ever nearer to the point, those same miniatures also made an appearance in one of the only boxed products ever released for Advanced Hero Quest, the Advanced Hero Quest paint set. The paint set came out in 1991, the same year as the Terror in the Dark expansion. Unlike Terror in the Dark, it included miniatures. A pretty useful selection actually. Along with 9 paints, a brush and a painting guide, you got one sprue containing duplicates of the 4 Advanced Hero Quest heroes, nice to practice on if you were new to the idea of painting. Then there was a single sprue from the Fantasy Regiments box, giving you 6 new characters that you could either add to your list of enemies, or even put into your heroic party. Finally, there were 2 sprues of 4 skeleton foot sloggers from the previously mentioned and absolutely phenomenal Skeleton Army box set. Why they never put some of those skeleton sprues in the Terror in the Dark expansion, I will never know. But anyway, I am on a quest, as many of you will know, to get one of every miniature that appeared inside the rules for Advanced Hero Quest, plus the expansions and supplemental White Dwarf content. It's a long-term project. Very, very, very long-term. But the remit of that project does extend to wanting to get at least one of each of the Fantasy Regiment miniatures. For the most part, I really just want one of each for the sake of the collection and to appease that little gremlin in my soul that yearns for all the things from my youth so it can create a little museum of me. I don't generally need more than one of each, as I already have a large collection of period accurate plastic orcs, skaven and skeletons, and I don't need a lot of dwarves or dark elves. But there is one exception, the goblin archers. I do have a lot of goblins, thanks mainly to HeroQuest and Keller's Keep, but none with bows and if you're going to make a good greenskin dungeon, some archers are a nice addition. Obviously, I want the metal archer featured on the stack card for the goblins, that would be Bambrog the Bald from the C12 Goblin range, but trying to make up a decent horde with metal miniatures is expensive, so the plastic fantasy regiment miniatures are a good option for cheaper period accurate pieces. As such, I've been on the lookout for some for a while, and I finally managed to score a set of 10 for the princely sum of £10. This is a stupidly good price, I'm happy with that. Unfortunately, all 10 have the same head, with the helmet, and they didn't come with the shields. But honestly, I'm not too worried about the shields, especially as the goblin profile in Advanced Hero Quest has them without shields anyway. The miniatures did come with their original square bases, ready to be ranked up for war, but I'm naturally rebasing them on round bases for Advanced Hero Quest because I'm a monster. And I guess that's it really. Sorry, this video went quite a long way to get to the point where I show you some old goblin miniatures, but hopefully some of the sights along the way have been interesting. I am something of an unreliable narrator, I am not a scholar of all things Old Hammer by any means, and some of my childhood memories are hazy at best. But I do know for certain I loved the Fantasy Regiments box set. The miniatures are simple but crisp and clean, cast in white plastic, which isn't something you see much these days, and I have such fond recollections hazy though they may be, of building, painting and using those miniatures in my childhood games. I'm very happy to have a set of these in my collection once again, even if it does mean my Advanced Hero Quest painting queue has got just a little bit longer. But that really is it from me for now, thank you so much for watching. 
If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.